more and more people are switching to credit and debit cards. I don't have my wallet. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. You've seen it on TV or the internet. Often creatively accompanied by that one ABBA song and worrying projections of the end of your privacy and the advent of a brave new world. But are things really looking that bleak for our freedom? Join me as I'm delving into the world of digital payments to find out if the freedom-loving Poles will finally be subjugated to the ruthless monster that is cashless. With the fall of communism, Poland pretty much got a clean slate to rebuild its infrastructure and quickly became one of the fastest developing nations in the former Eastern Bloc. Part of that is that now cashless payments are pretty much the norm everywhere. Like many foreigners, I was quite surprised when I first bought a tram ticket here and I didn't receive a physical ticket in return. I actually thought the machine was broken. Poland is a playground where more advanced payment forms are experimented with. Just give them a look through the windows of your soul and you can buy candy just by staring blankly at a screen. If you want to give payment providers more than just a look through your windows, you can straight up sell your soul for a few hundred bucks to get a commercially available payment chip implanted under your skin. Did you check if uh, the implant worked? Um, no. Would I... Did I... Was it an option? Thankfully, it does work, and now I can finally karate chop my life savings away. What? Magic, I got vaccinated. Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> it's connected to Bill Gates. Account. Especially when thinking about a pandemic, going cashless can only mean a good thing, right? I mean, after all, coins and bills are the perfect carriers for viruses and other germs. Now the question is, who or what is driving this train to cashless land? And who are the defenders of the apparent underdog in this story? The bastion of freedom that is cash. My attention was drawn to a foundation called Cashless Poland. I asked their spokesperson, Pavel Widavsky, why they exist. Market players, payment card organizations, issuing bank and acquirers decided to set up Cashless Poland program. And Cashless Poland program is a very unique initiative which allows every SME, every entrepreneur to receive a payment terminal for free for one year. The number of terminals in Poland, thanks to our program, increased to from 500,000 to 1 million. Our story got a little twist to it when I tried to find the defenders of good old cash. To my surprise, the voice of resistance doesn't belong to some underground mobster union. The call for freedom came from the president of the Polish National Bank who announced a national plan for cash security. Nadal około 10% obywateli nie posiada konta bankowego. A kolejne 10% wypłaca natychmiast wszystkie swoje środki, środki w celu opłacenia bieżących potrzeb. Eliminacja gotówki w ramach prowadzenia forsowanej przez niektóre banki, media i międzynarodowe koncerny ek ekonomii bezgotówkowej nie sprzyja poszerzaniu i wzmacnianiu wolności jednostek. So are cashless Poland the baddies? And what does Pavel have to say to this? National strategy for cash security. Um, do you think uh, that is necessary? This initiative is very important as uh, we live in a reality where cash and cashless payments uh, are both very popular. So it looks like nobody is conspiring to remove cash from our lives completely. It seems that it's just us, the consumers, who find a cashless reality to be more convenient. <laughs> Kiedyś było łatwiej odrobne niż teraz. Kiedyś człowiek człowiekowi pomagał, a teraz nie. I also met with Lech Wilczynski, a Bitcoin expert who has his own two cents to add to the picture. Accompanied by the hum of one of Poland's many Bitcoin ATMs, he told me that we're asking the wrong question. The division is not between cashless and non-cashless, but the sound form of money and non-sound money. So for example, we, we consider fiat money even cash, and uh, the, the money created by central banks as a fiat money, that is not sound. So it can be inflated away, it can be devalued, uh, printed away into oblivion. So Bitcoin gives you that opportunity to, to preserve your 
uh, spending power. There are two things that struck me about cryptocurrencies. One is that hardly anyone uses them, at least according to the latest report of the Polish National Bank. The other is that Lech told me about governments developing their own cryptocurrencies. Will these also be accompanied by counterculture vibes? In any case, handling fat wads of cash feels just so much more gangster. This is what 0.02 Bitcoin is, in fiat money. All in all, the report shows that 97.8% of Poles still use cash, which means that only 2% live in what we can call a cashless reality. We should be keeping an eye on this number to see if we truly are heading in this direction.